Are we? Yeah. So this week we're going to start off on your back. So I'm going to get Joe to lie down. Um, sorry, is everybody ready to crack on? Okay, well, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Which uh, feet to this way? Which feet to this way, okay. So the idea today is that I'm going to get you to warm up a little bit certain areas of the body that tend to be a bit tight. Um, so backs of your legs, a little bit of work on the shoulders as well. And then I'm going to take you through some yoga postures, which are really good for stretching, but also for strengthening the body. So my experience out here with um, sailors generally, um, I'm also a massage therapist, is that a lot of people come that perhaps haven't got the core strength and then they go out on the boats and they have a great time for a couple of weeks and feel a bit broken afterwards. So we'll do a little bit of core work and we'll work particularly on technique today with some of the stuff. So starting off on your back. So if lying on your back creates any back discomfort, which it can do, I want you to, you're going to work the right leg so you can bend the left leg and have the foot on the floor with the knee up to the ceiling. And that will just take the edge off the back if you feel it a bit in the back. And then we need to bend the right knee into your chest. And then you just hug the knee in. So this is just going to let the front of your hip soften off a little bit. So again, this gets quite tight when we sit. So just gently as you breathe, just pull the knee in. I'm going to slip a block underneath Joe's head. So if you find that your chin pokes back a bit, you can use a towel underneath your head or the block. So when we breathe, when we work with our stretching, particularly in yoga, we inhale, fill our belly up, and as you exhale, belly drops back to spine, creates some space, and then you move in that space a little bit. So as Joe inhales, his knee moves away a bit, and as he exhales, the knee drops in a bit. So then you can take the left leg flat if your back's comfortable and really extend into the inner heel of that straight leg. So from here, you're going to grab your belt. You're going to take the belt around the ball of the foot and hold the belt in each hand and then extend the leg away from you. So you might find to straighten the leg, you need to take the leg further away. And I've made the belt too short for you. So, you can just hold the belt lightly in each hand. And then you can see Joe's leg here is a little bit bent, so I would suggest taking it a bit further away and then really pressing through the inner side of the heels and drawing the toes back a bit. So you want the belt across the ball of the foot, so it helps to pull the foot equally here. And the toes draw back a bit towards your lower leg, which helps stretch the calf, the the area of the lower leg here yeah, into your Achilles as well a little bit. And you just breathe here for a few breaths and that helps to lengthen out the back of the hamstring that gets quite tight. So just taking one more breath. Then exhale, bend the knee back in towards you and just pop this foot onto your straight leg and then hold the knee with your left hand and let your right arm come out to the side at shoulder height. And then you're just going to pull that knee over to the left side and keep the right shoulder towards the mat. So if you go too far in the shoulder lift, just come back a bit. And then in this shape, you can just feel the breath as you breathe in. Feel almost like you're lengthening through your spine. And as you breathe out, feel the width of your body. So just feeling the breath here and particularly noticing from your fingers down the armpit, past the ribs, towards the hip, all of that space. Then inhaling, we draw the leg back up, and exhale, bend the left leg now, and then take this, to have the foot on the floor, and take your right ankle onto your left knee. And then thread the needle here. So you're going to take your um, figure four. So you're going to take your arms through the leg and grab hold of that left leg, pulling it in. So perhaps hold around the back of the thigh rather than the shin. And then you can straighten the left leg up a bit and press this right knee away with your elbow if you can, or just stay with where you are. So we get a little bit of a glute stretch now, and you breathe. So if it's not working to have the hands behind the leg, you can take the hands to the inner knee and just press the arm away, the right hand to the inner knee, 
as you pull the left leg in with your left hand. So again, just this nice glute stretch, just waking up all that space that gets quite tight. And then we just release, drop it down, and we do the other side. So again, you can keep the right leg bent, pull the left knee in towards you, and again, just with your breath, just soften that front hip. So the inhale, belly expands. The exhale, belly drops back. We pull the knee in a little more. And again, you can just remember perhaps on the trapeze, and this is an action you do quite a lot, pulling in the knee and pressing it away. So this bit of stretching at the beginning might help with that action a little bit. Again, the right leg can start to straighten if the lower back feels comfortable. And then we'll take the belt around the left foot and just work into the back of the hamstring on this side. So again, just keep the shoulders as soft as you can. Drop them back to the mat. So noticing here, Joe's leg is bent a bit. So I would suggest, again, take it a bit further away and stretch and lengthen into the heel of that leg and draw the toes towards you. So you can see maybe that Joe's thigh is engaged. You're lifting the kneecap. So this front thigh muscle is supporting the back of the leg. And you're breathing deep there. And as it starts to free off a bit, the back of the leg, you can pull the leg a bit closer towards you. Some good faces going on down here. <laughs> and then we're going to release, release that leg. So of course, you can always pause this if you play it back and hold this stretch longer. And then you take that foot onto your straight leg. That's it. And take the knee with your right hand left arm out to shoulder height and gently pull the leg over from here. So again, we're just allowing this side body from the fingertips past the armpit down the rib cage on the left into the glute around your buttock muscles towards your knee to get a nice stretch. So it should feel quite nice. A nice face. <laughs> And then we inhale, draw it back up to centre. And then that figure four stretch again. So we bend the right knee. The left ankle is on the right knee. Just past it a little bit. And then we take hold of the back of the right leg. And we press the left knee away. So again, try and keep the back of the head on the, the floor, or on the mat if you can. You can straighten this top leg a bit. And bend the knee slightly. So you bring a little bit of pressure here. And then you can use your left hand on your inner knee to just press the left knee away as you pull the right leg in and breathe there into the glute. So a little bit of a light glute stretch, sometimes a bit more than light. Easy breath. And then exhale, release. Bend your knees into your chest. And then if it's okay for your spine, you're going to rock backwards and forwards with your breath to find your way up to your seat. If it's not, roll to one side and then come up. Good, so turn face that way. <laughs> you're going to sit on your block if you need to, or you can take a blanket and sit on a blanket. And then you can sit cross-legged if that's okay for you. And grab your butt. So... If sitting cross-legged is not so comfortable, you can take a different position. You can always sit on a dining room chair if it's really uncomfortable to sit like this. Joe's got quite open hips, so it's all right for him. But ideally, you want to have your hip points, these bony bits at the front of your hips, a bit higher than the knees. So sometimes we need to lift up a bit more on our and our bottom here. So hold the belt a bit wider. Now, be mindful of shoulders if you've got some rotator cuff stone go stuff going on. You're going to inhale, draw the belt up. And as you exhale, bring the belt back to that point where you feel a little bit of something going on across the front of the chest. So it doesn't have to be all the way back. Once you reach that point where you feel something, you take the breath into that space across the chest. It gets quite tight when we're sitting at a desk. And be mindful that you're not dropping the head back forwards. Joe's been quite good here, keeping the head above the spine. But sometimes we end up with the head dropping forwards. So try and just be mindful of that. And then inhale, draw it back up and over. And exhale, just release it down. We'll do one more of those. So inhale, draw it up. 
Exhale, bring it back. You can bend the elbows slightly and just feel again that nice stretch across the chest. Be mindful not to puff your lower ribs out too much. So you want to keep that nice length to our spine. And then inhale and bring it back up. And exhale, release it down. Just give the shoulders a bit of a roll out for a moment. Good. And then from here, you can demonstrate without a belt, but Joe will do it with the belt. So you're going to inhale, bring the belt up. Exhale, pull the left side of the belt directly down to the side. Then take it back in the same line behind you. And then pull the belt down a little from there. So that right arm might bend a little, but you want to keep it towards straight. And what you're getting is a stretch underneath the armpit and around those muscles, around the rib cage, under the armpit here. Okay, and then just let it come back to the side, bring it up. And we do the same on the other side. So right arm comes directly down to the side, pull it back behind you, and then draw down from there. So you're pulling up a little out of that left armpit. And we breathe here. So top elbow a little soft if you need to. Easy breath. And then coming back up. And exhale, release. Just roll out your shoulders. And then bring your arms in front of you. So you can cross the right arm over and bring the back of the, the um, forearm of your other hand to your lower arm and just gently draw across here. Or, if you've got a little bit more flexibility, you can cross your arms above the elbows, backs of the hands together, and take elbows forwards, fingers up. And then just breathe into that space around the sides of your shoulders and between the backs of your shoulder blades. Drop the shoulder, and then release. And we do the other side. So bringing left arm over, you can support it with the right arm, just gently pulling over and just drop the left shoulder. Or again, we can cross above the elbows, backs of the hands, palms of the hands together, elbow tips forwards, fingertips up, shoulders drop, and you breathe into the back of the heart. So if you're more like this, better to stay in this position. I can see just at the corner of my eye what's going on with Joe. Just keeping the arm like this and breathe. Good, and then just release. Roll out your shoulders. And then I want you to come over onto the mat to lie on your belly. So, take a block out the way. So I'll just get you into a good position for down dog. So down dog is a position that's really good for lengthening out our back for helping to release the spine. It gets a bit in the hamstrings as well once we get a little bit more flexible, but the main area is shoulders and back and down dog. So often finding where we need to be in terms of length is a bit hard. So I want you to bring your hands back so that the middle finger is in line with the center of your chest, sort of about breastbone height. So that will be about the right position for when we come up. And then you tuck the toes under, come up to all fours from here, don't move your hands or your feet, and then lift your bottom up and press up to a down dog. So, this is about the right stride length, there or thereabouts. So, from here, I want you to bend your knees a bit. There's three ways you can work legs. So one, bend knees, bottom high. The wider you take your feet, the less, uh, the less intense it will be in the hamstrings. So this is the first position. Try not to collapse in the lower back. Think about this front ribs staying to the back ribs a little. Okay. Second way you can work your legs is to straighten the legs. Really press your bottom high to the ceiling and lift onto the balls of the feet so that the heels are really up in the air. So that's the other option for working down dog. The third way you can work it with your legs, if you're more open in the hamstrings, is to descend your heels with your legs straight. But often what happens in the beginning is we come too much into the shoulders. So better to either bend the knees or keep the bottom really high and be on the balls of your feet. Okay, so just take a break, come down, come on to all fours, but don't move hands or feet. Just let your breath settle a moment. 
And then I want you to look at the hand position. So hand position, you can have the fingers forwards like we just did, or experiment with turning the thumb and first finger out so they're more parallel to the top of the mat. So we'll go up and do that. So turning that space between thumb and forefinger leg positions. So bottom can be like high. And you can breathe here. You can experiment with how that feels in the shoulders. It might be a bit too much. You might not like that. So come down again. Ideally, we have middle finger roughly forwards, but sometimes shoulder stuff gets in our way. The other option is you can grip the edges of your mat, thumb forwards. So you're gripping with your thumb facing forwards, and then you lift up into your down dog from here. And you can breathe here. And this creates more space around your shoulders. So you're feeling the outer armpits wrapping in a bit. You feel that length through your spine. You try not to collapse in your front ribs. You keep bottom high. You can come onto the balls of the feet or you can bend the knees. And then exhale and just walk forwards. Bring your feet towards your hands. And we'll take a forward bend. So release the mat. Bring your hands to your lower legs here. So you've walked forwards. And then just bend the knees a bit. So bring your hand to your back and try and find that nice long back. So set your belly button towards your spine a little. Bend your knees a bit more. Keep that length to your back. And then exhale, fold down. And just bring belly towards your legs, chest towards your knees, and drop the head. And take the elbows. And just take a few breaths here. Feel your breath. You can sway a little side to side. Just taking a little bit of awareness into the tops of your legs, around your glutes. And then you can bring the hands back to the shins. And I want you to lift your front spine, take an inhale and feel that you come more to a tabletop position. So those paraspinal muscles around the lower back have to work to, to engage your spine. And then exhale, bend the knees a bit, keep the chin in, drop back down into the forward bend. Take a breath, just hold the legs wherever's comfortable, but try not to have rounded here. Try and keep that length through your lower back. And then press through your feet, take an inhale, reach wide, come up. Look up to your thumbs and exhale, hands through centre. So from here, inhale, reach wide and look up. Really press down into your feet. Exhale, fold forwards. Again, bend the knees. Bring your belly to your spine, chest to your knees, hands down. Inhale, lift the hands a bit. Lift and lengthen the front spine. Lower back engage. Exhale, drop down again. Bring your hands to the mat and step the right leg back. So you're going to take that lunge position. So drop the back knee down from here and come up, bring your hands to your hips. Check your front leg position, knee above the ankle. Slip the hands onto your hip points, these bony bits at the front of your hips. And just imagine you're pulling them up. So that front rim of the pelvis lifts, the tail drops. Then inhale, raise the arms up. So this is going to get into our hip flexors in that back leg, which again get very tight. And again, it's the psoas muscle, which gets talked about a lot in yoga. This can access that a little. So hips lifted, tail long, breathe deep. And then exhale, hands down. And let's step back to down dog again. So check in, hands are either forwards or they're a little turned out, or you're gripping your mat, your bottom's high, you're either on the balls of the feet with the bottom lifted high, almost like you're trying to turn your sit bones to the sky, or you've got the knees bent, bringing belly more towards thighs, or we're releasing heels down with the legs straight. Then we're going to step the right foot up between the hands. So to do that, you might need to bring the back knee down, Help the right leg up. Top of the back foot down, come up. Check your front knees above the ankle. Lift the hip points, drop the tail. And then inhaling, if it's comfortable for your back, reach your arms up. And again, keep that engagement a bit of the abdomen. 
keep an awareness of that front rib lifting of your pelvis and another breath and then I want you to exhale hands down and come to all fours so from here just take the knees back a bit from the hips have a look at your hands we're going to take a plank but I want to just make sure we've got the technique so hands underneath your shoulders and rather than just collapse down into the hands really press down through the hands so it's like you protract or press that area between the shoulders up. Then think about the tail going long. So it's like your lower front ribs move to your hips, your hips move towards your lower front ribs. Then I want you to see about lifting the knees from the mat. So we're in a nice long line from our head through to our heels. We've not got the bottom sticking up, so just stick it up for me to show what not to do. So a lot of people come somewhere between a down dog and a plank. So we want to be shoulders over wrists, tail long, those inner thighs rotating up, pressing through the hands, this space between the shoulders protracted and pressing up. Good. Then from here, exhale, bend the knees, and imagine that heart space coming in front of your hands as you lower your body to the floor as much as you can, elbows staying in. Right, just come down to the mat and then bring the tops of the feet to the floor and I want you to have your feet at least hip distance apart then bring your hands back beside you with the palms up so locust posture this is a really good one for strengthening this whole back line of our body that gets really weak when we do a lot of sitting so from here I want you to lift your right leg but just a little and keep it straight Spread your toes, and now lift your left leg. Keep it straight, spread the toes. Now just feel that your hands are facing up, but you're rolling the heads of your shoulders back from the mat. Then lift your head and bring it in line with your spine. Then you can lift the hands from the mat and feel that the hands are in line with the shoulders as much as you can. So this is locust, all of these back muscles, either side of your spine, your glutes, your hamstrings, they're all working strongly here. Exhale, release down, and bring your hands underneath your head, and just turn the head to one side. Take a break, take a moment, and let the heels drop out. So, if you've got back stuff going on, depending on what it is, it can be quite good for strengthening the lower back. Okay, now feet wide or hip distance is generally better if we've got a little bit of a weaker back. If you want to strengthen it a bit more, you can bring your feet together in your locus, your legs together, and feel like you're going to press the inner sides of your feet and your heels together. Bring your hands to your bottom, the forehead just on the mat, and have the hands, palms down on the bum. I want you to be able to feel it. So on the inhale, you're going to lift both your legs and feel how that engages the glutes and the hamstrings. And then you roll the shoulders back and lift your head from the mat. And just breathe here. If it's too strong in your back, stay with the legs apart and don't hold the bottom. And exhale, release back down. I'm just showing you a few ways of working. So just soften, relax, take a breath. Then interlock your hands at your base of your spine. So fingers interlock. Keep your feet hip distance again now. Spread your toes. And as you inhale, roll the heads of the shoulders back and press your fingers towards your bottom and lift your legs again from the mat. So this is a bit more of a deeper locus. So this is, as I say, really good for strengthening that posterior chain in your back. Then exhale, release down. Bring the hands back to that position where we find the down dog. So fingers just in line with the chest. Keep the elbows slightly in. And then tuck the toes and come back to down dog. Good. Take a couple of breaths. Feel that height in your hips. Feel the balls of the feet. Press the finger pads down. So underneath your nail beds, really feel that you're pressing that space down. 
Roll the armpits slightly in. Breathe deep. And then look forwards and step up to the front of the mat. Bring your feet hip distance apart. Lengthen your spine, take an inhale. And exhale, fall to the forward bend. Inhale and reach wide and come up. And exhale, hands back through centre. So we're going to do this one more time, but a bit quicker. And then this is your sun salute. So inhale, reach up, look to your thumbs. Exhale, fold forwards to your forward bend. Bend your knees a bit, remember your back. Inhale, lengthen your spine. Exhale, check that front knee position. And as you inhale, come up, lift the front up. Your inner thighs to each other. Really feel those front hip points lift. And another breath. Then exhale the hands down. And I want you to step to plank. So inhale at plank, exhale here, really press that space up, keep the tail long, drop the knees down, and lower to the earth, bringing your chest in front of your hands. Bring the hands back beside you, palms up, spread the toes as you inhale, lift your legs, lift your chest, lift your hands, locus, take another breath, and then exhale down. Hands just on the sides of your uh, breastbone so that they're in line. Tuck your toes. Press back to your down dog. Breathe. Settle. That inhale, belly expanding. The exhale, belly button gently drawing back. Feeling the action of really pressing the hands down to lift the hips higher. Try not to just collapse around the shoulders. Feel you're active in that space. And then on the inhale, we're going to step our right foot up between the hands. You can drop the back knee down to get that. You're going to drop it down anyway once you're there. And then again, lift your hips, come up into the lunge as you inhale. So stretch your fingers up to the sky. Keep that tail long, the front hips lifted. Feel that sucking in of your thighs towards each other. And then exhale, hands down. And we're going to step up on the inhale, feet hip distance apart. Good. Bring your hands to your lower legs. Inhale, lift your front body. Get those paraspinal muscles engaged. And exhale, fold in. Put everything out your head. Take an extra breath here. And then bend the knees slightly. Inhale, reach wide. Come up, look to your thumbs. And exhale, hands through centre. Good. So you can always do quite a few of those, but for today we'll leave it there. You're going to step out now and face the wide edge of your mat. Okay, and take the feet a little bit wider. So I want you to take right foot to 90 degrees and bend your right knee. So this is where we start to come to some of these standing postures. Bend the knee until the knee's above the ankle and keep the knee more to the fourth or fifth toe, the little toe. And then just shuffle this back foot back. Have your hands on those bony hip points again. And try and have those hip points level. And just get into a position where it's comfortable, but you feel a stretch through these inner thighs. Tail is dropping down. And then I want you to feel from the crown to the tail, you've got a vertical length. And then bring the arms wide and feel the width horizontally from your fingers. So you can be here and not be very active, or you can be really active and just suck your triceps, the backs of your arms, to your arm bones. Look past your front fingers, press a bit more, drop a bit more down into that front hip, and simultaneously press a bit more through that back leg. So this creates some strength in our legs. It's really good if we've got some knee stuff going on. And it's really good for helping to open up the groins and the inner thigh. And then exhale, hands to hips, straighten the front leg, and let's turn the foot the other way, left foot. Bend the left knee, again just have the hands on the hips and try and keep those hip points level. So sometimes we sort of rock the one hip out. Tail drops down, we keep that length through our spine, and again we spread the arms wide. Really suck your triceps to your arm bones, and breathe here. Try not to let the shoulders be all hunched up round your neck, and try and keep your jaw soft. Drop a bit more into that bent knee if you can. Keep
keep that back leg even more active. Really drop down through the outside edge of the back foot. Take another breath. And then exhale, hands to hips. Straighten the front leg and just step your feet back in. Just give your feet a little bit of a rest. Good, then we're going to take it a little bit wide again. So not quite as wide as the last one, but almost. Hands on your hips again. Take right foot to 90. And just look at your back toes. Turn them slightly in from the back heel. It helps protect the knee. Keep the hips level. Micro bend the front knee. So that doesn't mean like this. It just means take the lock out of the leg. And then this time, with your hands on your hips, tilt the hips a bit so that back hip is going out for the little. And then inhale and exhale, fold over this front leg. So bring your right hand to the right leg and stretch that top arm up. Feel again this length from the crown to the tail. And feel the expanse across your collarbones and through your arms. And really again, breathe here. So this is getting even more into that front inner leg. You might feel it a little bit around the hamstrings. Don't go too far down the leg if you feel that your chest has gone forwards and your bum is sticking out. So make sure you feel that you've gone more sideways than forwards. Okay, then press into the front leg, use the top hand, come up, and then just bring your hands to your hips and turn your feet. So, left foot to 90, back toe slightly in, you might prevent that front knee, hands are on the hips, and we press that back hip out a bit. Inhale, reach the arms wide, and exhale, bring the front hand towards the leg. So again, if I just exaggerate it with Joe, so if he goes much further down, He'll collapse forwards like this. So I want him to, again, just be in that side line. The length from the crown to the tail. And again, the length widthways across the chest. So it's almost like you're making a star shape, energy going in all directions. And then coming up on the inhale, use the top arm. Exhale, release, roll out the shoulders, step the feet in. Just give them a bit of a release. Okay, so then I want you to turn and face the short edge of your mat. Have your feet hip distance apart, be at the front edge of it. And we're going to take our Virabhadrasana one. So all the Virabhadrasanas were said to be warriors, so they're quite strong postures. You can step your right leg back, not too far to begin with. And then I want you to bend your right knee, uh, sorry, left knee. So you've got the knee above the ankle. So don't let it go in front, and then you can just walk the back foot back a bit further. So when you look at your feet, roughly, the heels are just either side of each other. So just imagine they're on train tracks, they're not crossed. Okay, just either side. And those back toes are to the corner, or the right corner of your mat. Hands on your hips, and then try and see, tail drops, lift those front hip points up, and see about turning the hips more to centre. Wherever they end up, just stay there. And then you can either stay with hands on hips, getting that big hip flexor stretch, or we can lift the arms up. But if we feel it too much in the back, keep the tail long and come more towards that 45 degree angle with our chest. So we don't want to feel that the lower back's getting too cramped here. Dropping the tail and coming more towards upright with your spine. And that increases that hip flexor stretch down the back leg. Okay, and just feeling your breath here. Shoulders can rise up a bit here, that's okay. Okay, exhale, hands to hips. And then we turn and we face the other way. But you might need to change your length of your stance, depending on if you've got some hip or knee stuff going on. And you'll need to bring the left foot you use the right foot a bit more to the right left side of your mat. Okay, again, those back toes are to the front corner of your mat. And then bend your front knee. So again, check the knee position. It doesn't want to be too much in front of the ankle, if at all. And that back leg super active, really ground through. Hands onto the hip points, lift the hip points. Turn the hips more towards that bent leg 
uh, side of your mat. And then as you inhale, raise the arms up. And stretch up through the fingers. Bend that front knee again. Be more active in the back leg. Keep tail long, hip points lift. Remember if it's too much, hands on the hips. Or you can lean forwards a bit with your torso. Keeping belly engaged. Lower back nice and long. But we're not tucking tail. We're just letting the tail be long. Good. And then we're going to exhale. Bring the hands to the hips. And just turn back to the centre. And just release your feet. Good. Okay. So we turn to this edge. And this again is just a bit more of strength. As well as your flexibility. So hands at prayer position. It's not an easy posture. I never enjoyed it, but it is a really good one. So we're going to bend our knees a bit. We're going to bring the weight more to the right leg. Pick the left leg up. And we're taking a modified Virabhadrasana 3. So you're going to start to stretch that leg directly back behind you. Keep the chest lifted. Keep your bent leg that's on the floor a little bent. And try and straighten the back leg as much as you can. Keep the belly to the spine. Keep the hips forward. It's really working that standing leg. It's working your balance. It's working all those muscles in your feet and around your ankle. <laughs> and then exhale and pull the leg back in and come back up. Take a breath. <laughs> Bend your knees. I didn't tell him we were doing this. You're going to lift the other leg and then exhale and start to try and take it back behind you. So again, we're trying to keep the chest level, the hips level. You press back, keep the chest lifted a little, keep the tail long, bring belly towards your spine. And again, we breathe here. Nice, easy breath if you can. Notice the hips, the left hip, the floating hip will try and turn up. You want to keep that pressing a little more down. And then exhale, pull it back in and take a breath. Ooh, release. Roll out the shoulders, just give yourself a little bit of a shake out. Good. Have your hands on your hips, your feet hip distance apart at the front of the mat. Take an inhale, lift your heart. Exhale, bend the knees a bit, bring belly towards your legs, drop the chest to the knees, and take the elbows, and just breathe here in the forward bend. So if you've lengthened out a bit now, you can straighten the legs, but not at the expense of your back. Drop your head, make sure you've not got tension around the neck, and breathe. Good. And then we're going to exhale, plant the hands on the floor, and step back to down dog. So just walk your feet back. Just take a couple of breaths at down dog a moment. Keep the bottom high, press the hands away. And then let's drop down to child's pose just for a break for a moment, knees down. Then you can sit back onto your bottom, your bottom to your heels. One of the things that people sometimes find uncomfortable is not being able to get the bottom down, just lift up for me. So you can always bring a cushion between your bottom and your heels if you need to. And you can always grow the floor to you by popping a block or a cushion underneath your head, underneath your forehead. If it hurts the front of your ankles, you can roll a towel up and just pop that underneath the front of your ankles to stop that a little bit on the feet. Okay, so you're going to come up to all fours. So we've worked our back core in our locus. We worked the front part of our core in our plank. So now we're going to do the side core work by working our side plank. So from all fours, you're going to step your right leg back. So your right hand under the shoulder, right leg goes directly back behind you. And then we're going to lift up our bottom and bring the left foot so it's halfway along, sort of more towards the hip uh, height. And then turn onto the outer edge of the right foot. And you've got your right hand. And we lift that lower hip up. So we're trying to stack our hips a bit. And then if it's comfortable, we raise the top arm up. And we breathe here. So we're really pressing up through that under hip. And we're pressing.
sensing that through the lower hand to lift the lower shoulder away, we not just collapse down, we're really active. That outer edge of the foot working, breathing deep. And then exhale, release. Come back down, come onto the knees. Just take a moment, take a breath. And then take the left leg back and we roll to the outside of the left foot. We step that right foot up about halfway. We come round, we really lift our hips, stack the hips above each other. Let's take the foot back a bit more on this, this one. And we stack our hips and then we raise the top arm up. And we breathe here, so we're taking that back foot back a bit more. Yeah. So breathing deep, feeling length through our spine, trying not to drop the head. And we feel that side core engage. Then exhale, bring the hand down, come back to all fours, and we make it back to down dog. So that's the kind of modified half plank, side plank. So take it into the full one. So you're going to inhale, roll forwards and find plank, regular plank. Don't drop the knees. Then as you exhale, bring your right foot central on the mat. Yeah, just in the same line, not forwards. And then roll to the outside edge of the right foot. And try and stack the left leg on top of the right. If it's too much, remember you can have the leg in front. Lift those lower hips and you raise the left arm up. And we breathe here. So we try and bring a, a crown of our head in line. We extend the tail away. We really lift up through the hips. And then exhale, release down. And just go back to down dog. Good. Take a breath. Good. From here, left foot comes central. We roll to the outside edge of the left foot. We come forwards into that plank. Release the right hand. Stack your right foot on top of your left. Lift those lower hips. Try and have the hips level and raise the top arm up. Keep pressing down through the lower hand as you do it. Breathe. Keep active, crown and tail extending. Remember, there's always the option to have the leg in front. And then exhale, hand down. Step back to plank. And exhale to down dog. And just wiggle the hips a bit. And then release back down to child's and take a break. So it's important we have strength as well as flexibility within our, um, when we're working, just generally in life, it's really important. So often in yoga, people think more about the stretching, but strengthening is also really important. So just come up, come to sit on your bottom, and the last little bit of strengthening work, you know, bring your bottom down, and bring your back nice and long. So just take your hands to your back, so you're on your sit bones a bit, Feel that the lower back is long, so you're not collapsed. Feel that the heart center is lifted. Then lift your right leg, so you've got the shin parallel to the floor. And lift the left leg. Try and glue your shins together. Keep lifted through your heart center. And breathe. You can have um, one of those fitness balls between the legs if you want to. Those smaller ones, not the giant ones. And you can squeeze the legs together. You can release your hands and breathe. So this is an avasana or boat posture. It's a strengthening one as well. And then exhale, release. Bring your feet together and let the knees drop out. So this is Baddha Konasana. So I'm quite open in my hips. You might find you're a bit more up here. That's okay. Have your hands back and just take a breath. So lift the chest, let the knees drop as far as is comfortable. And then we're taking that Navasana again. So you're gonna come back, back onto the sit bones, long back, glue your legs together, lift the heart center, and then release the arms. Keep the chin neutral, trying to stick the chin back. Breathe deep. And then exhale, release. Bring feet together, 
Drop the knees out, hands back behind you, lift the heart, drop the knees, take a breath. And exhale, release. Take the hands to your legs, to your feet. Staying upright might be enough. You can just take a few breaths. Or as you exhale, keep the chin in and start to fold forward. So elbows on your inner thighs as you do this. And imagine you might be a million miles away from it. Just smile at the idea of it. And again, this is working those inner seams of your legs as you fold forwards, but it's also going to get a bit into the lower back and around the glutes. So then let's inhale, come back up, help your knees in. The last couple of postures, you're going to take the right leg out, and then you can cross the left leg over, or you can have the foot in line. When you work here, I want you to keep that length through your lower back, so you might want to sit on something to lift your hips. Okay, so you're going to inhale, lengthen up, and as you exhale, you turn towards your bent knee, hug the knee. You can have a block or a book behind you if the floor is not quite there, otherwise hand on the floor. Take an inhale, feel width across the collarbones, and as you exhale, turn through the thoracic spine and just look over the back shoulder. So thoracic spine is from your base of your ribs towards your shoulders. So just breathing here and the head turns last. And we just feel the breath down the sides of the body. And then inhale back to center, exhale, release. And we do the other side. So again, we're gonna inhale, lengthen up. Exhale, turn towards the bent knee. Keep that focus of the long spine and turn slowly. Keep an action through the straight leg. Keep your gaze soft, your jaw soft. Feel your breath. And then inhale back to center. And exhale, release. And the last one, the bridge. So you're gonna to come to lie on your back. <laughs> And then again, if you find that you're a bit tight around the shoulders or you're a little bit more muscly around the shoulders, you're going to take your head onto your block. So, knees bend, and you have your feet in line with your hips. So, outside edges of the feet are parallel. If you've got some knee stuff going on, take the feet a bit further out. If the knees are okay, then roughly heels and the knees. There or thereabouts. Make sure both feet are even. And then for the first one, I want you to take your arms overhead to the floor behind you before you lift up. So if it's too much, you can have them at a cactus shape. I know Joe's got some stuff in his shoulders. So from here, think about the tail just going towards your heels so it flattens off the belly a bit. And then as you inhale, press into your feet and start to lift your hips from the mat. So you'll have to work really strongly through that posterior chain again in the back side of your body to lift up. And then make sure that the tail is long, so it's just going down towards the knees when it's at its maximum. And an easy breath. And then it won't go into quite so much extension when you're working like this, but that's okay, we're working controlled. And then you're going to exhale and roll back down. Then I want you to take your hands down and grip your mat, either side of your mat. Okay, so thumbs are up, you're gripping. And then you're going to roll back up again into your back bend. So the inhale tends to lift us in the back bend. And from here again, tail is long, the inner thighs are rolling in, we're pressing through big and little toe, and then we're seeing about lifting a bit higher in the hips and thinking about that area between the heart center, the breastbone, coming a bit more to the chin, but not pressing chin to chest. So we start to open into that space between the shoulders a bit more. And then exhaling, roll back down. And just bring your knees in, hug your knees, and rock a bit on your back. And then you come to lie in a star shape on your mat. <laughs> and you rest in Shavasana. It's a really important part of the practice. It lets your body completely settle and absorb what you've done. 
But if you haven't got time for it, you should make time. But if you haven't, you can come up and we're finished. Thank you very much. The idea of this class was just to give you the technique a bit more. So you can work with this, and then from now on, on a Friday, I'll do more of the flow sort of classes, that you'll have that technique to keep referring back to. Thank you very much. And thank you to Karen for putting us through our paces there. Oh my goodness, I didn't know that a lot of that was coming up, and some of that was pretty juicy. I hope that others might have found it juicy as well. Um, yeah, so if you're just catching this halfway through and you want to watch it again later, um, these videos have been taking about, I don't know, two hours or something to upload onto YouTube afterwards. But this will be available to watch um, after about two hours forevermore. <laughs> so you can work through it in preparation for coming back next week for more. So I hope you're feeling loose enough now for a gin and tonic. Um, so I should go and start squeezing some lemons and uh, well done to Harry for... Oh, Ricky Nielsen says, hey guys, thanks guys. Damien from Maputo says, hi Joe, hi Damien. Uh, good to have you all board. I hope you're feeling loose. Thanks Marco. Um, thanks for sticking with it all the way through. I think um, it's important. If you keep doing this uh, regularly, I think it's good for you. And next time you get out on your boat, you'll feel better about things, moving about and uh, stuff. Thank you. <laughs>